corruption costs Kenya over 600 billion shillings showed that only 1% of Kenya's 16 billion dollar budget was used lawfully. It's 16.8 billion shillings, even before taking into account the dump scandal. About the 21 billion shillings Kimorer and Aror dump scandal. Which corruption has permeated the highest Many of the procurement-related scandals that have hit headlines in Kenya have one key thing in common. It is not just one company that reaps benefits from a government tender, but a network of companies. Much like a spider's web seen on its own, one company's connection to the tender they've won might look like it is just one thread. But take a few steps back, and you see that the connections are many more. But how does that network function? Africa Uncensored received a data leak from Kenya's public finance management portal, the Integrated Financial Management Information System, IFMIS. Four years worth of transactions from eight of Kenya's 22 ministries are on that leak. Some 25,000 transactions. A good number of them seem legitimate, but quite a number tell another story. A story of a public finance system that is linked to a web of companies and people with an altogether different motive. When we shared with him what we had seen, Kenya's outgoing Auditor General, Edward Oko, described it in this way. So that uh, systems capture, which these people, but this must be people who are very knowledgeable and they knock on the doors and create budgets. We combined this data with publicly available information on other databases including Kenya's public procurement portal. And soon, interesting connections began to emerge from the most unlikely of places. Our story starts in a small office on the third floor of an old office block in Nairobi's central business district. We are on the way to meet Stella Nyamo, a founding partner of a company's secretarial firm, Samantha Associates. It will be our first meeting with her, but her name is one we have seen literally hundreds of times before. Our attention was drawn to Stella after we noticed that her name appeared on five of the over 100 companies that had received payments relating to the construction of two dams that are currently under investigation by the Department of Criminal Investigations, the Kimarer and Aror dams. The list was made public by the DCI on the 25th of February, 2019. Stella was listed among the directors or persons with information about the following five companies. Long Rock Limited, Long Rock Investments Limited, Akua Agencies East African Limited, Lagoon Logistics Limited, Mastered Projectors and Communications Limited. Now, follow this connection closely. The agency that had commissioned the construction of these dams is the Carrillo Valley Development Authority, the KVDA. Two of the five companies where Stella is listed are also linked to someone much closer to the KVDA, Dina Jepkoril Chalanga. She is a board member of the KVDA and a director of those two companies. In the dataset leaked to us, these two companies also appear several times, receiving 137 million Kenya shillings in numerous transactions between 2014 and February 2018. The managing director of the two, Long Rock Tours and Travel Limited and Long Rock Logistics and Freight Limited, is one Dr. Eliud Kipkoech. Long Rock Tours and Travel Limited and Long Rock Limited are still getting paid by the government, even as they are still under investigation. From the procurement portal, they have received well over 26 million Kenya shillings worth of tenders between 2018 
and July 2019. On social media, Elliot and Dina seem to have a close romantic relationship, possibly that they are married. Elliot is the director of both Long Rock Limited and Long Rock Investments Limited, which are directly linked to Stella Nyamo. All four companies are among those being investigated by the Director of Criminal Investigations for the Two Dam Scandal. According to the Public Procurement Authority's regulations, this is a clear conflict of interest on two levels. First, given that Dina Chelanga is a board member of the KVDA, she is not allowed to own, be employed by, or have oversight of a company that bids for tenders for the KVDA. Secondly, Elliot's company cannot bid for a tender at the KVDA for the simple reason that he may be married to a board member. The company's secretary to the Chelanga companies, Stella, should know this and advise against it. This is Stella's explanation for the connection. Company secretary duties is a, is, is a term that is very new to many people, and particularly those who are registered in company. So you realize that at the time of incorporation, you are, it's like you know the services of a company secretary are required. So you call upon a person you don't know simply for the purpose of fulfilling the statutory requirement. As a company secretary, you, could, um, uh, you are only involved when a particular company requires your services. Any other time, they don't involve you on what, on what they normally do. However, according to documents provided by the Institute of Company Secretaries, ICS, the roles of a company secretary include using personal initiative in raising matters that may warrant the board's attention, ensuring that all contracts and agreements are kept in safe custody and are easily referenced, maintaining the company's statutory books and records, and is privy to confidential information about the organization and needs to act with tact and discretion at all times. Be that as it may, Stella's connection to other companies that go on to win numerous tenders is outstanding. Our deeper focus on Stella Nyamo became even more interesting out of going through transactions on the infamous data set leaked to us, as well as from the government's own procurement portal. On this portal, Stella is listed as a director of over 100 companies listed as government suppliers, with 29 of them having won tenders in 2018. Her name appears as a director twice as many times as the next most popular name. The contracts her company obtained have ranged from provision of security services to routine maintenance of roads and environmental consultancy to the delivery of laboratory equipment, among many more. Out of these, two valuable infrastructure contracts for routine road maintenance stand out. One for the Baragoy South Ho Sarima Road worth 19 million Kenya shillings and one for the Lodwa Lorenga Loop Road worth 8.5 million Kenya shillings. Here's a little context. The Baragoy South Horse Arima Road is a very important road, linking two counties where life is very difficult. Masabit and Samburu counties are often the settings for devastating droughts, inter-community conflict and difficult lifestyles for the people there. This road would ensure that services reach the people of this region faster. The state of this road, as at June this year, speaks for itself. It was even more appalling to find Stella on a global database of companies, Orbis. Her name listed in 163 other companies. Before asking her to comment about her role as a company secretary, members of our team posed as people interested in bidding for tenders. She was eager to show her experience. 
Stella denies any involvement in the dealings of companies apart from a few occasions when she needed to sign company documentation in the absence of one of the directors, contradicting what she stated earlier. These companies are small companies and whereby why law provides is that there are some small companies that are not able to have uh, in-house company secretaries or they, are, they don't have enough work to keep a person engaged throughout the period, they say a month or a year. In that case, you find them sourcing out the services of a company secretary. Stella's modesty about the company she deals with doesn't match the facts we have seen. Government payment data leaked to us further indicates that nine of the companies that belong to or were incorporated by Stella have been paid over 500 million Kenya shillings between 2014 and 2017. In some cases, the amounts paid out have no description of what the payments were for. We got in touch with a few of the companies that had Stella's name down as a director shareholder to confirm Stella's role in the company as well as what services they were paid for. One of them is Angelica Medical Supplies Limited, which received, among other payments, 38 million Kenya shillings as payment for procurement of consumables for the Kenya Government Initiative the Managed Equipment Leasing Scheme, or the MES. This is a recording of that phone call. Hello? Yes, how are you? Fine. I wanted to, uh, to inquire whether Stella Nyamu is your company secretary. Yes? Is Stella Nyamu your company secretary at Angelica? Stella, Stella Nyamu? Yes. I've never had... She's not? No. Okay. No. Uh, the other question I wanted to verify is, yeah. Um, yeah, you see, you, you supply medical equipment, right? Yes. And I see uh, there was a payment of 38 million made on 6th June 2017 for the consumables of medical equipment to the ministries of health. There's nothing like that. We don't sell we don't sell equipment to the Ministry of Health. We sell consumables, but I can't remember if it was when it, if it we sell we sell not M yes they're they not M yes because there's nothing like M yes consumables. That's okay that's how they there, there's nothing called M yes consumables. So if you are honestly on IFMES that's mm. not the information you have. Mm. It is written medical equipment consumables. There's nothing like that. Angelica Medical Supplies Limited, a local company, is providing medical equipment and consumables under the Medical Equipment Leasing Scheme. According to all information available in the public domain, there are only five companies that are supposed to be providing this equipment and none of them are locals. The Ministry of Health has so far declined to make the contracts public. Until the point when these contracts are made public, it is difficult for anyone to be sure about whether Angelica or a number of other companies providing these services are doing so legally or illegally. We then called Long Rock's Dr. Elliot Chelanga and the call was very short. Hello? Hello, Dr. Elliot. Madam. I have a few questions to ask you. Uh -huh. And this call is recorded. What is the purpose of this call? I wanted to know what uh, uh. services do Stella Nyamo offer to the Long Rock group of companies. At, at who? Stella Nyamo. Is Stella Nyamo the company secretary for Long Rock Limited and Long Rock? I'll, I'll, I'll call you, I'll call you. Another company, Sandales International Limited, had transactions that to us appeared duplicated. They are also linked to Stella, but when we reached out to them for comments, company representatives declined to talk to us or put us in touch with any of their directors. All in all, between 2014 and 2018, 
companies connected to Stella have been paid at least 10 million US dollars or 1 billion Kenya shillings. Procurement is a very difficult one. You can't see it because if it is well you know, organized, it's very difficult to see. So the only time you can see is when you jump the fence and see what has been delivered. And that's where you come into the issue of value for, for money. On value for money, let's return to this road in Baragoy. Gamoji Limited, a company connected to Stella, its other directors, listed as Noor and Abdia Ali Jilo, received over 19 million Kenya shillings contract to maintain that road. This picture was taken in June 2019. Was there value for the money paid? What matters should a company secretary raise with a board of directors? The postponement of a meeting or the fact that the company, after having been paid almost 20 million Kenya shillings for maintaining a road, seems not to have maintained the road at all? Stella Nyamo may be connected to quite a number of companies that do business with the government, but not all of them appear to be doing so legally. Like the Long Rock companies belonging to Dina Chelanga and Eluit Kipkoech, Stella is connected to other companies whose directors, including herself, are being investigated for various corrupt acts. So who is Stella Nyamo? An innocent victim of her own success? A professional on the margins of deals and transactions that she knows nothing about? Or a person at the center of a web of companies that win tender after tender?